Hi, I'm Marie. Welcome to Marie's Kitchen. Today we're making a marinated flank steak. And this is one of my favorite cuts of meat for so many reasons. One is it's affordable. Um, it tends to be about $12 to $15 for a pound and a half for a nice big steak, and this can feed our whole family. So that's a great deal. It's also, although it is kind of a tougher meat, if you marinate it, which is what we're gonna do today, comes out really tender with really great flavor. It's also very easy to cook. We're going to marinate it for a couple hours and then pop it under the broiler so that you just some high heat from the top, flip it and then broil again and it's done. You can also grill outside if you have one. What I really love about this particular dish is the marinade is so simple. There's just a few ingredients and it gives such good flavor to this meat. If you're kind of intimidated by cooking steak, don't cook it that often. This is a great way to learn. So I hope you'll stick around. I'm really excited to share this one with you. Let's get started. marinated flank steak. What do you need? First step of flank steak. And this is about a pound and a half of flank steak. So it's a rather big one. You can get smaller if you're just serving two people, but of course I always like to get bigger and have leftovers. This one's about a pound and a half. Um, you can see it comes in this sort of rectangular shape. One side, this side here is thinner. And this side over here, this is a little thicker over here. And so what I really love about that is that this, the thinner side tends to get a little more cooked and this stays a little more rare. So that way if you have people in your family who like different levels of doneness, you can have some more medium over here, medium to well, and then you can have more medium, medium rare over here. So. I love that versatility of this cut. Flank steak is a tough piece of meat, so there's two things you need to do to make it more tender. First is marinate, and you wanna marinate in some sort of acid like vinegar, red wine, or lime juice. We're using lime juice today. So that vinegar, that nice, or that acid, that marinade will soften the muscular fibers and make the, the meat more tender. So be sure to marinate if you are doing a flank steak. The second thing you need to know about the flank steak is it has these long horizontal lines here, and that's called the grain. To make sure the meat is tender when you chew it, you want to cut against the grain. So you'll slice it perpendicular to these horizontal lines. By cutting it against the grain, perpendicular to the grain, you are breaking down some of the muscle fibers and making it easier for your mouth to chew. So two things to keep it more tender, a nice acid in the marinade and cutting against the grain and nice thin strips and I'll show you that in more detail. So that's really what you need to know about flank steak. For the marinade we'll need lime juice, olive oil, fresh garlic, cumin, salt, and then a little cilantro. And if, of course, if you don't like cilantro, I know there are a lot of people that <laughs> genetically do not like it, um, <laughs> think it tastes like soap, feel free to leave it out. I just like it for the extra flavor and I do love the flavor. So that's it. I mean, it's just one, two, three, four, five. Five ingredients on your steak. Pretty easy. I'm gonna use a Ziploc bag to hold the marinade and the steak in, and then you can toss it when you're done. To marinate the flank steak, you're gonna take one quarter cup lime juice, and this is already, uh, it's fresh squeezed lime juice. We can buy it at our grocery store, and I, I buy this often because we make margaritas, and I make cilantro lime sauce, and then they use this for the marinade, so we'll really use it up. But you can use just regular limes and squeeze those yourself, and you'll need a quarter cup. Then we'll add a quarter cup olive oil. Then we'll add a teaspoon of salt and a half teaspoon of ground cumin. And again, give this a smell. It is a very strong smell and it's really good. It's often used in chilies and beans and it's a great smell, but you just, I don't like to overpower the food with it because then that's all you taste. So we're gonna use about a half teaspoon of ground cumin. Pretty easy. Love this one, you don't really need a knife. Um, one of those no chop recipes, always my favorite. Then we're gonna use two cloves of garlic, fresh garlic. 
There we go. And I always use my garlic press, which I love. It's super convenient. You just pop the unpeeled garlic right inside and then press and the garlic comes popping out. I have to use two hands, but it does come out. So then you just scrape the garlic. I can give you the link to this if you want one. They're so awesome. It's by Alpha Grillers and they're just the strongest heavy duty garlic press I've ever had. I love being able to put it in unpeeled and then just press the garlic right out. It's really so easy. Yeah. Now we'll add some cilantro and this is rinsed. So we're just going to tear off a handful of it and you can chop this or you can just tear it up. It depends. If you want to get out a knife and chop it, you can it, or if you're lazy like me, you just tear it up and throw it in the in the marinade. So, okay, so I'm going to do it the easy way and just uh, tear this up a little bit just to get the flavors going. Just tear that up and throw it in with the marinade. Real simple, real simple. No reason to make this harder than it has to be. Then we'll grab a fork and give this a nice little whisk. We'll just have our marinade all in the Ziploc bag. You can just mix it together with your hands like that. Just kind of get the flavors going, mix it all up, and then add the meat to it, and that's it. Y'all, you, then you put it in the fridge and let it marinate for two hours if you can, or as long as you can, and then it's ready to cook. So very simple. I really hope you get to try this one, especially if you're new to steak and wanting to learn how to cook a nice, affordable cut of steak that still turns out really delicious and really flavorful. This is it. <laughs> we have our steak marinating in here and just want to make sure it's kind of getting on the meat and then we'll just set that in the fridge and let that marinate and then this is ready to ready to cook right before dinner. So pop this in the fridge. While the meat's marinating, let's talk real quick about some serving ideas. So we're going to serve these as fajitas or soft tacos. And so to go with that, we're going to use some flour tortillas. To go on the tacos, I'm going to cut up some lettuce nice and fine. The real thin shredded lettuce is nice for a little crunch. You could also use some shredded cabbage. It's always nice. Also the green color is beautiful. When I'm putting together a meal or a dish, I always try to think about color and texture. Like you have some crunch here in green. We're going to have some kind of sweeter, softer, acidic of the tomatoes and red. And then you can put some cheese, some avocado is another shade of green. So that really is what makes your food and serving really so beautiful is using a lot of different colors and textures that go together. We have our shredded lettuce. We'll just put that in a bowl. Then I'll cut up some tomatoes to go with it. And these are just some little um, cherry tomatoes you can just throw on the taco. They'll be great. So some other things you can put on top of the tacos. If you have extra cilantro, just wash this and pick a few leaves off and sprinkle those on top. It's delicious. Also a little tip for storing cilantro, wrap it in a paper towel and then put it in a plastic bag. The paper towel will absorb the moisture and then it won't go bad as fast. We've got some grated cheese here. Put that out. A hack for a really simple sauce. You just take some sour cream and then thin this with a little lime juice. So we'll just put a little lime juice in there. You could also thin it with water or a little milk. Basically, you just want to get it a little thinner so it'll drizzle a little easier on your tacos. So lime juice and then a little more salt. And I do have a sauce called cilantro lime sauce that I make a lot and that is a little more involved. It's cilantro, lime, uh, Greek yogurt, and mayonnaise and salt. And that I do in the mini food processor. I love that option, but for something just really quick, if you just want to throw together something to drizzle on top, you could do some sour cream like I've done here with a little lime juice. So that will be delicious. And then avocados, also some red onions or pickled red onions would be great. But this is it. This is all you need for dinner. If you want to serve it with some rice, I do have a video on that. I have cilantro lime rice and also plain white rice. It goes great with tacos. So. Now it's time to cook the steak. So I'm going to grab it out of the refrigerator. Okay, so here's the steak. It's been marinating in this lime juice, cilantro, garlic, all that 
It's looking really good. Now we're gonna turn the broiler on to high, and the broiler is the top of your oven. The heat's coming from the top. Bake, it comes from the bottom. Broil, it comes from the top, and it's more of a direct heat. So we're gonna broil, and you're gonna need to move the racks in your oven to like the upper third, so it's closer to the fire, because you want pretty direct heat on this flank steak to just kind of char it, and it's almost like grilling it, but you're inside. Um, so I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna check the rack. And that's high enough up. I'm gonna set it to broil on high. And then we'll give that a few minutes to heat up. And in the meantime, let's put our, we're just gonna set it on a cookie sheet. And you don't wanna put any parchment or anything down because that can catch on fire under the direct heat. So be careful there. I am going to get some paper towels out though. When you're cooking meat and you wanna get a nice sear on the outside, a nice kind of crisp, crust on the outside, which is always what I'm going for. To do that, you need to make sure the steak is pretty dry. If it's wet and there's a lot of moisture around, it will end up steaming the meat, and then you have this, it's cooked, but it's just kind of like steamed meat, which is definitely not as appetizing as a nice, you know, charred kind of crispy, with something with crispy edges and some char on it. So we are going to wipe it off a little with a paper towel. And just pull this out of here. There we go, toss this, and I'm just gonna dab off the moisture so it's drier, so that when it cooks, it will not steam. You do not wanna steam, and this applies for veggies too. If they're really wet, or if they're crowded on the pan, you'll end up steaming them, and that's just not what you wanna get when you're roasting veggies or um, cooking the meat. So let me wash my hands, and then we'll pop it in the oven. I'm gonna add a little extra salt on top, and some black pepper. There we go. And then we'll put this under the broiler and get that cooking for about six minutes aside. How long you cook it is gonna depend on how thick the steak is. Some flake steaks can be very thin and small. Some are bigger like this one and thicker. It also depends on how uh, done you want your steak. If you want it more on the medium to medium rare side, I would cook it more like five minutes aside and check it. But if you want it more on the well, go up to six or seven minutes. So, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna pop this in the oven under the broiler. Okay, and this looks great. You can see it's starting to get a little brown here on the edges, so it's cooking really well. It's not steaming, um, and it's just getting nice color and it's shrinking. That's what happens when it cooks. So now we're gonna flip it over. Just gonna use a fork, keep it simple, flip that guy over, and then a little more salt and pepper, and then back in the oven under the broiler for about six more minutes. Okay, well the steak is done. It looks great. It's got lots of nice little crispy charred edges, which gives really good flavor. Also, just appearance, it looks really good. It looks like it came off a grill almost. And it smells great. Uh, we're gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes. Anytime you're cooking meat, you wanna let it rest for 10 minutes after you cook it. That'll allow the juices to redistribute throughout the meat. If you cut it right now, the juices will just come out and um, you won't have as juicy a steak when you, when you then go to eat it. So let it rest for about 10 minutes, and then just remember to cut it against the, like this, <laughs> cut it against the grain. The grain, you can still see the lines going horizontally. We're just gonna cut perpendicularly, and that will make the steak more tender. Okay, so the steak is ready to slice, and we're just using a large, sharp knife, nice and long, so it goes across the whole uh, piece of meat, and nice and sharp, and we're cutting it kind of on an angle into these nice, thin strips. Cutting into thin strips is another way you can keep this really tender. We've got the marinade, we've got the cutting against the grain, and then cutting into thin strips, and that all helps to this meat really tender and just makes it such a wonderful dinner 
for families or for just people who are, you know, just need a quick meal. The marinade takes just a few minutes and then if you leave it in the fridge until dinner time, then you can, at dinner time, you just pop it in the oven for four or five minutes aside, maybe six, depending how you like it. And this is ready to serve. So, and this could be, you know, you can put it on a salad. You can make like a, um, a taco salad with this beef on it and then all these other fixings would be really good. It's really pretty. I love how it's a little pink inside. You can see that but still we've got some a little more well done pieces down here at the end. It's just gorgeous. Thanks so much for joining us on Marie's Kitchen. Today we made this delicious marinated flank steak and set it out with a variety of toppings for tacos. I can't wait to serve these tonight. We're gonna have fajitas. I might throw some rice on later and dinner is done. This was so easy with the marinade, just a few ingredients and then the toppings already shredded and then you know just a few other little things to chop and shred. Takes no time at all. Anyone can do this. Whether you're a beginner or you've been cooking for a long time, this is a great meal. It's a great weeknight meal or if you had some people over and you wanted to share this, this is a great meal to share with like a dinner party or another family. So keep this one in mind. The recipe is below. If you have any questions or need anything else, comment. I would love to hear from you. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Also be sure to subscribe. I've got lots more videos coming up with recipes just like this where they're very easy, accessible ingredients with just a few steps and they come out so flavorful and delicious. So you can get you know, really confident in the kitchen. Even if you are a beginner cook, you can learn these recipes and become really confident cooking this gorgeous fajita dinner like this because that really is what this is all about. It's about giving you some recipes that give you confidence in the kitchen so then you can feel really proud serving food to people that you love. From my kitchen to yours, thank you. Ugh, that scared me. <sighs> then we'll add a, the paper towel is absorbing the mark. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> My kids gave me these bear paw uh, mitts. <laughs> they work pretty well.